Hello, I am Endlessness and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. And today I would like to bring you a guide for the Logue's Ruins dungeon. This one is also one of those returning early game dungeons. If I remember correctly, this one was in October. So uh, if you look at the recommended power, it's between 104 and 188. So it is a significant increase compared to the other ones. However, going through the dungeon info itself, I would recommend bringing all three elements. The main element in this dungeon is wind, but also fire and lightning. And for the sigil itself, I recommend bringing only the X sigil. But, but in this case, bring a physical sigil. So that's Ruin Blow X sigil because of, just because of the behemoth. Behemoth is the final boss of this dungeon and during his sigil phase, which is alert, if you do any three magic attacks, then he will counter you with a quiet, strong, powerful flare attack. And ideally you want to avoid that. As for the other bosses, Airbuster prototype, wind and lightning so it's just up to you which one you choose however you can't debuff him at all the spooky ball and i come back to it in a second the icy raven it it's just immune to you magical defense down other than that you can just do whichever you wish with him but it's wind and fire so you have a little bit of choice here what you want to do here However, Spooky Balloon and Mad Anchor are those two annoying bosses. They have always those that threat assessment and it will det det determine which of your characters is powerful. Most likely you have two DPS and according to that DPS it will assess and for example if you have Murasame Cloud which is a stronger DPS character then he will gain physical resistance and resistance to lightning. So that's why you want to bring two elements, light, lightning and wind, and for Mad Anchor that the same case, fire and wind. But if you want, you can for example also birth, bring Aerith, because she's a magical user, so you might have some advantage there. However, this is my team, my three characters. If you want, you can use whichever characters you want. Like I just mentioned, when Aerith will be perfect for this dungeon, I just like playing with those three. However, like I said, Cloud has the Murasame, Zephyr has the Wind, and Zack is just my debuffer and healer, and all of them, they have physical X sigil Other than that, you, you could use, for example, uh, Cloud with the Ramu. Either one is uh, fine. Of course, Judgment Ball is great. If you want to, just to go with the non-elemental limit breaks, it's also fine. For Sephiroth, I have his non-elemental limit break because I don't really need Hellfire, I don't think at least. And Zack is, like I said, just my debuffer and healer. And all those empty sub slots and materia slots are just something you can use to buff yourself because I powered down my characters just in case, so Cloud has only... 2.5 physical attack, Sephiroth has 2.3 and they have actually three materia slots because I want those sigils and the three elements. Other than that, the empty slots you can use to either buff your physical magical attack or HP or whichever other stats you would like to buff. But also, I think I have forgotten about the map. This is how the dungeon looks like. It's not as big as it seems, however, if we go here, this is where this dungeon becomes a little bit more annoying, because at this point here you'll, you'll come to a place where you have to leave one of your characters. And you'll have the first boss, which is the Airbuster prototype, and you have to defeat it only with two characters. So that's why I would recommend bringing a DPS and a healer, just in case. And then are just two normal bosses, and here is the same case. You'll have one, the Icy Raven, you'll have to defeat also with two characters because the one character will have to stay behind. So you can always choose which DPS you would like to leave, leave behind, 
However, those two bosses you can only do with two characters. And also the two rare chests, they are also very hard to miss. They are in very obvious places. However, this one is the exact thing I was just talking about. You have to leave one character and since Airbuster is very weak to lightning, I recommend, in my case, I will leave Sephiroth. This is unscapable, you cannot choose your route, whatever you want to do here, however... Oh, actually there is nothing here, I thought there would be a chest. So all you have to do is go up here, and here's the Airbuster prototype. In my opinion, it doesn't matter which character you bring. If you have Sephiroth, Cloud, Wind, Aerith, there are also other characters that you can bring. That they also can do a lot of damage. It doesn't matter, just in my opinion, bring your stronger DPS here. I will actually stay on Zack just in case because I want to save my ADB. To heal us after that EM field. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but just in case. And here's the first sigil. It's also very fine. And from now on, I will. I want to say I will start saving ADB with Zack, but. Well, it was a little, a little bit quicker than I thought. But then again, in every dungeon, the first boss is the, the, the easiest one, so don't worry about it. And he, here you can choose between lightning potency, fire wind potency, and wind lightning potency. This one I wouldn't really recommend, because you lose a lot, a lot of the other elements. And it depends on, on your setup, what light, what resistance you'll get on the Mad Anchor and Spooky Balloons. So I would actually go with this one, just in case. This one is seems like I have a lot of lightning potency, so I am not struggling, just in case. Here's the first rare chest. And if you go down, then we'll soon have all three characters in, in our team again. And I will actually switch to Zack to save that ADB, because Cloud can just finish him. And now we're ready to get our team back and go into the third boss. Sorry, second boss actually. And just step here, this is the small animation and we are ready to go now. But also, if you see this, this is one of those, those dungeons which has a predetermined route and you, you don't have any choices, you just have to go go with it. And of course that's the spooky balloon. Oh sorry, actually, yeah, spooky balloon. Here is the preparing analysis. You can actually damage it a little bit with the materia, however, or even if you have Tifa with her motor drive because she has a very fast attack but here oh yeah we actually got a storm proof and physical resistance so it doesn't really affect us at all just cloud has to do the his own thing with the materia but now it's the threat assessment again and actually will he heal Yes, begin maintenance, and this is the self-restoration. If you are not quick enough, then he will restore its health, and you just have to go back to removing his health again. It will be just a little bit slower, but this fight isn't actually that long or difficult. 
as long as the boss doesn't have any physical resistance or magical resistance which decreases your DPS, it's, it's all fine. And here it's up to you. The healing potency is nice, physical and magical defense also nice. However, this one it's the minus 30% healing potency, so I just go with the defense. You are free to choose whichever you want. However, here's the final boss. And just in case you want to go further. Because here's the the second half of the map. So if you just go for the final boss, you will skip two bosses. As you can see, there's, here's another thing, so we have to kill another boss with only two characters. And this time I will actually leave Cloud. Because now we have Fire and Wind. And for Wind, Sephiroth is my better DPS character. And just another two of those. So it'll be very quick. I'll switch to Zack to save the AD before the next battle. And that's the boss, the Icy Raven, which also doesn't really pose any threat. It'll be just DPS it with, with wind, ideally. If you have a good fire weapon, then choose fire over it. Just depends on your team and setup, which element is your strongest one. However, I think, personally, physical characters benefit more in this dungeon because, for example, Icy Raven, he can decrease your magical attack. And in this case, if you have a physical DPS, it will not affect them. And just Kira from, to recover from this attack and you're good to kill him. And it's done. And now for the next boss, you can actually kill him with two characters, but, but now you can retrieve your second DPS, so you can just go with that. So again, here's, here are the three trans abilities. If you are weak on healing potency, I would recommend this. However, I think the best and safest one is physical attack plus 10, because he, here you, can, you are losing your your physical defense. It's very nice because it depends on your team. If it's strong enough, then surely go for that one. It's It'll benefit you a lot more. Yes, you basically nullify that physical buff you have chosen earlier. However, I do those guides here to be as safe as possible. So I will not do anything. And here, if you see, you could go straight for that, but I just went here to retrieve my third character. And this one is the Mad Anchor. And then we'll just go back straight for the Behemoth. And here again, Threat Assessment. And ideally, you can always choose your items. If we have any summons, summon chargers or anything, then you can use those. And now it's wind barrier, so it's not ideal for me. So Sephiroth will have to do just with fire blows. 
However, my anchor, as you can see, it is it has those two blue icons. One icon is the windshield, so he is immune to that element. And also the second icon is the physical shield. So with physical, we do a lot, a lot less damage. Arm sweep, it's fine. Ideally, you can skip this phase if you unleash your three limit breaks. So there's a chance you will skip this phase where he becomes resistant to all of those attacks. So you can quick, quickly kill him actually. So just Kira to recover and we are good to go. And now preparing analysis, second one. Personally, I think you can always, oh now it's a flame barrier, so it, it will be easier for me because Sephiroth can do his big gale strikes. I'm always switching to defense just in case. And now is the self-restoration. Oh, actually it's not. Never mind. But between those phases you could always unleash your limit breaks just to finish that. It's very quick. You have like one second in between when he loses those two barriers he has, then you should do... If you want to do a limit break, you should do it then. And the last threat assessment, I think. Actually, no, it's failure. And now it's breakdown, so you just finish him. If you have a good team, then it will take you one, two hits. So if, when he enters breakdown and he's low health, don't do your limit breaks because it'll take you two, maybe three hits at most. And here's a second rare chest, so as I said, they are very easy to see, so you won't miss them. And here, magic attack, healing potency. I don't have any magical users. If you have, for example, with Aerith, that will be very benefiting to you, but I will use this one actually. And just go for the behemoth and finish the dungeon. Since Behemoth isn't weak to anything, oh actually I didn't want to do the homing blast. Since Behemoth isn't weak to any ele elemental attacks, you can use whichever weapon or attack you want, you will not do get extra damage from that. So at least you are not limited to any weapons in this case. Over here I will actually cure because I'm not sure for how strong that body slam will hit. Switch to defense and you're good. Honestly, now redoing those dungeons, even powered down, it is much easier to survive because we have gained 15 20 levels between now and then. So we have a lot more HP, which makes it very much easier to survive. So yeah, that's the third dungeon we currently have. If you have any questions or if you're struggling, I am always happy to help in the comments. However, I do think that because of the recommended power increase, it might be a little bit harder. However, still, after all those months, it, it still doesn't... It's easier compared now to then. However, like I said, thank you very much for watching and I hope that my guide was helpful to you. 
So I guess I'll see you on the next one.